After the losses in the Antares sector, and this doesn't look very well erased actually, I look at Badlands and the Terrans have a heavy cruiser, a destroyer, and a scout. And they're facing a battle cruiser, a heavy cruiser, a destroyer, and a light cruiser. I decide not to fight, and that pushes this here, and that also is going to uh, accrue some more points over to the Talon player. So they're going to have more production from those two. Let's go to Maelstrom. Now, one of these, at least, you know, the Terrans had better fight, right? Maelstrom, they have a battleship and a, and a carrier with four fighters. Versus a Dreadnought, a battlecruiser, and two destroyers. I feel like both sides want to fight this one. Let's see what our terrain is here. This is the Maw. It's going to be a black hole surrounded by a nebula, if... I understand things correctly. I'll try to make sure that I, I see that properly. Uh, I really don't know how to handle the initiative factor. Um, technically, by the rules, talent always have initiative, which means they will get to always deploy uh, the terrain in any scenario. That can be really kind of problematic. But is that a built-in advantage for some reason? Supposedly, I would think the ship points are aligned. The production, everything like that is all set up. So why does the game have this baked-in advantage for them? Is it just an error? Should I do something? Should I roll a die? Should I take the smaller force? Who has the initiative? I don't know. Uh, so far, I'm going just with the way the rules are written. But I'm not thrilled about it. Okay, and Sunday rolls around, and I finally get started on this. Um, and yeah, I still have to go shopping, but I got up super early today. Uh, so, first turn, four, five, and six speedy guys over here. I've learned the value of doing side slips. Uh, not so much just the value of doing them, but the fact that you can take your action point thrown into side slip, and it's going to be good for the game. It doesn't go away, so until you use it, uh, it's there. The shield reinforcements probably not going to matter on that uh, on that first impulse, so I'd rather build up a side slip. Other things you can do are charging up batteries, which is valuable. Unfortunately, the carrier and the fighters have no batteries. Uh, so here on the Terran side, I keep wanting to call them the feds, um, I have loaned a side slip to one of my squadrons. And that is a useful thing. Uh, remember, the carriers can power up the fighters. Now I have to actually move the fighters. With their turn radius of zero, I don't know how big a deal side slips are, but their weapons are forward facing only. So... Uh, it probably is useful. And then we just kind of push forward. These huge fill the hex counters are kind of problematic. Um, I'm used to the SFB counters, but also the SFB, uh, I had the, the big hex uh, expansion that came with bigger ship counters that were very pretty. It was almost like playing minis because of how pretty the counters were. Uh, of course, I didn't have counters for all the ships, but I had a lot of them. And I, I tended to use that. I really liked the way that worked uh, in terms of appearance and helping me visualize the battlefield better. Uh, but those counters didn't fill the hex, so you could slide them forward without the pain of hexagonal counters. And now the fighters, seeing that they're getting kind of close enough for weapons, they're turning and trying to do their little outflank thing. Remember, there's no stacking basically in this game of your own ships. That's a horrible thing to do. Uh, even though the ships have take up very little of the space, uh, they do have their collision factors if you hit your own ships. So it does create kind of a problem. I can't have a big stack of, of fighters operating as a single object. I don't mind that. I mean, you know, there's assumptions in terms of the technology, etc. But it does lead me to different types of thinking about how to use the fighters. Oh. 
One problem I have with the, the Terrans is they don't have a lot of ship here. <laughs> they got a lot of fighters. They don't have a lot of ship. Uh, but I'm hoping to use the ship, the main ship, the battle cruiser, uh, the battleship, as kind of an anchor uh, or, or or the anvil, and use these guys as the hammer to smash into the rear uh, of the uh, Talon ships. They have more maneuverability. Of course, the disadvantage is this is and possibly this, are going to take a lot of fire. And if they get destroyed, it's a problem. The fighters get to get out of places uh, if you win the battle. <laughs> you, it's not like an SFB game where if all you have left is fighters, you've lost because nothing can retrieve them in time. They've got enough life support that you can get transports into place to pull them out of there. Those don't count um, as carriers. That's kind of strange. I don't remember if that's the case in uh, Space Empires. I seem to remember Stranded Fighters having problems in it, but it's been a while since I played, so. I did catch though that I miswrote red. I have real trouble. My threes look like fives. This writing, you know, on the counters, it's difficult to do mechanically. Uh, so these guys have side slips. This does not have a shield uh, reinforcement. Why is the carrier so? Is it really programmed to start slower? Because that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's actually programmed to throw those fighters out in front and, uh, and operate slower than all the other ships. You can see the Terrans uh, choosing to turn off with the carrier. It's a little too weak to put in the front line, so I kind of want to make sure it's part of the outflank too. I'm just using this as the anvil. These guys pushing forward now. The problem for them is we're in range now. I, it would not be unreasonable for firing to take place. But these are missiles. Uh, there's some degree to which there's maybe not as much necessity to blow that destroyer out of the water or out of the space <laughs> right away. So I'm kind of holding off on that. But I may be sacrificing one of these fighter squadrons uh, to firepower. and Or at least part of it. And that can be a painful uh, situation to give things up. Just, just because I haven't been able to push. By the way, you can see the map uh, has shifted quite a bit. I did the easy shift just uh, pushing this thing out there. It looks like we're not going to be using the side near the uh, black hole particularly. Talon have put the uh, Terrans in a kind of painful situation here for the final phase. Uh, continuing to move forward with these guys. The destroyers peeled off and it launched missiles, three of them at these and one at this set of fighters. What I have to worry about is I don't have an easy way to shoot these missiles now. Uh, one of the problems with what I did. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to close in here, launch my fire on this thing, which has already shot its wad, but what can I do? Um, Keep closing range, I guess, my different ships. And now this guy can burn his side slip and get out of range of some of these missiles. I'm still going to eat one of these missiles. That's enough to kill me, unfor to kill a ship, unfortunately, but uh, one of the fighters. But I'm going to unload some firepower on uh, that. Get back in a moment. Got to replace. Not enough side slips in the game for this battle. And this is not a big battle in my view. After if I want to uh, grab and uh, try to get rid of initiative, uh, the Talon kind of had a reason. Maybe they wanted to burn it and could have, instead of picking up a side slip, done that. But anyway, for the Terran firing choices, this squadron, which no longer has a missile tracking it, uh, unloaded. And did a lot of damage to this destroyer. It has now got one of its missile systems knocked down. Um, and it's got uh, power reduction. Is it completely out of the battle? No, it can still do some crap. But I've really kind of weakened it a great deal by where it moved. Fighters can be pretty potent. Those are just phasers, three phasers at that range. But it's a weak little ship. And it presented a side, so, which was probably a mistake. Uh, the other missiles I shot out with the with the battleship. Um, I shot two, which 
It's basically the best you can do. I'm at range two, that's as good as range one. Two points of damage isn't enough to take out a missile, so basically two phasers can take out any one missile at ranges one and two. Because the fighters have trouble getting arc on the missiles and are really vulnerable to them, it turns out. I wanted to knock that out. Using the carrier, not so wise, so I chose not to do that. What that's gonna do is when it can line up a shot, uh, maybe it will, you know, maybe it'll be able to get the extra shot. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna lose some fighters, but that's life. I also chose to fire my wave motion gun at the Dreadnought, pushed it back a space, and did a bunch of damage. Now, slightly better than 50-50 chance, but here's the thing. I, in order to get a better shot, I have to get at range two, and it's a pretty good long-range weapon. I managed to, you know, shove him back a little bit, do a lot of damage to his shield on his big ship. That's going to present him with some tactical choices that, you know, make things harder. He's probably not going to risk that big ship, but here's a real problem. Um, his fusion gun is forward-facing, and so he's got to expose that forward arc, arc if he's going to fire that thing. Uh, and remember, that's very powerful, especially when ships are kind of close together, as all the Terran ships are now. <laughs> um, that's gonna push us over here, and we start doing the charging and such not. And to some extent, the Terran's got an advantage by, eh, although he also fired, by firing some of their weapons, um, they're gonna get some of their weapons recharging more quickly. And this fighter squadron can start being recharged by the carrier. And I forgot about the effect of the black hole. Um, the wave motion definitely hit. Uh, the phasers, I didn't check those. So I'm gonna take uh, rolls. That might affect things. There might be an extra missile there. So first shot, second shot, we're good. Only on a one do I miss. First shot, second shot, we're good. Okay, yeah. Uh, with this, It is closer, so those were affected too. I'm not gonna try to uh, figure out what happened there. I definitely screwed up. Uh, because right now I'm looking at, hey, when does the gravity pull happen? This happens after the power phase, which will be you know, right in there. We're gonna have a little point where everything shifts towards it. And I may have some problems, because basically what I do is I trace a line of sight, and it's possible two ships could be going into the same hex and collide and that causes some damage. Okay, basically nothing too exciting happened there. Everything, uh, the, the hex grid did not cause any collisions. Eh, that's something I don't like about the collisions rules is the fact that the hex grid can, general, can occasionally cause something like that. Um, whereas really the pull would be uh, intrinsic. Now in some cases you are drawing closer to something so it should cause some. But in some cases, it's just the nature of the hex grid that actually causes the collisions rather than something else. And it's hard to decide where, where that difference lies. <laughs> I could probably come up with examples if I really had to. Um, the Talon, not too much change in their uh, power allocation, although I am speeding this destroyer up, hoping to get it out of there before it gets killed. And yes, I have my afterburners too, which probably will be used. Um, the fighters, most of them went up to 061. Try to get me a little bit more speed to get around the enemy. Um, whereas I've slowed down my capital ships uh, with the intention of having more power. In the case of the battleship, uh, to get its weapons back online as quickly as possible. In the case of the carrier, to loan power to those fighters to get them to get weapons online, etc., as quickly as possible. At the end of Impulse A, uh, not a lot for the Talon to do. It's the ship turning away. Fighters press forward. This one turns away from the missiles, give it a little bit more time for the carrier to get shots. It can take out one more of these missiles, then I only lose one fighter if that's the case. Uh, a little recycling on this weapon. If I'd recycled the phaser here, it could take out that final missile. Here's the problem. There's still five more missiles. <laughs> I don't have the firepower to protect those fighters if uh, those missiles are going to be unleashed on them. Base Talon's still trying to 
uh, slowly close with the slower Terran capital ships. And I got the afterburners when, when I need them, which is soon because I don't have a lot of energy on these ships. I want to get close to this thing and light it up and maybe take the carrier down with the fusion guns too. Uh, the big thing is my disruptors and the fusion gun are both close range weapons compared, uh, well, this is range two but close enough range weapons compared to the Terran weapons, so I need to get close to them. Now that means exposing myself, and Wolverine Squadron already shot my side. Two of their fighters were able to recycle from the carrier. They shot my side uh, shield, but I got a one, which is not good because of the uh, black hole. So one of the shots missed completely, and the other one was actually a two, so it only did uh, the shield reinforcement point. So essentially nothing happened from that. I've got another ship that can recharge, maybe get a shot in on the destroyer and, you know, just plink it. Um, these fighters are able to recharge their weapons pretty quickly while the carrier is in range and moving so slowly. I'm so damn easily confused. So <laughs> I fired four missiles from this thing. It only actually had two. Um, I don't know what to do because everything's kind of revolved around that. <clears throat> I'm going to say these were dummies of some sort, some kind of special magical weapon it had, and uh, they've just been discerned to be such. And so this movement away and everything, it was all unnecessary. Um, but we're lining up to launch a couple more missiles here. In this turn. And you know, Mistakes can be explained away in methods like that. And I actually burned my afterburners to try to get in closer on the destroyer. This is one of the turns where my battle cruiser, or sorry, uh, on the battle, battleship, where the dreadnought and the battle cruiser don't have a move. And I feel like the, the battles go so quickly in this, you kind of want to just charge up and do things. Um, I can't keep allowing those fighters to keep swinging through. I'm not going to have four missiles per destroyer for very long. <laughs> fighters took out the destroyer's missile uh, complement. However, we only have two shots there and one that we charged up there available to attack whatever. You know, I mean, <laughs> we're blowing away these destroyers, which are kind of good at knocking out fighters, and that's valuable. But we'd like to really to take out um, some of their heavy firepower and so far we haven't been able to uh, unleash anything worthwhile on them. I mean two phasers is not enough to even crack his back shield so I feel like trying to take out that destroyer is probably the best thing we can do at this point. And then we have to worry about the battle cruiser which is also carrying some missiles. The missiles are really good against the fighters. And the Talon did their worst. <laughs> it was a lot actually. Um, the disruptors cracked the shields and did some damage to about here on uh, the battleship. And then the, the fusion cannon destroyed it. The explosion took some of the shielding down here. Follow up the fusion cannon uh, out at range three even. Still did four points of damage. Um, a lucky shot. But. And uh, basically has stripped the carrier down to a weaker thing. It's got all of its shields down now until they're repaired. And uh, I launched some missiles at it as kind of a, a goodbye to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna... Not now it's just a matter of trying to mop up those fighters as far as I'm concerned, um, because there's nothing else left. Now the fighters can definitely do some damage but I don't think they can stand up to what they're facing, which is really almost an entire fleet, uh, almost the entire fleet that they were facing initially. This destroyer is a little hurt. Now, those two extra missiles stripped these guys off. That's the effect that they had. Of what we're seeing here is an actual advantage that the Talon have deploying missile ships against the fighters, minus the one cheat, or if what we're seeing is uh, my own favoring of certain kinds of te uh, techniques of attacking, which the Terrans are not using here. I mean, 
but I'm used to playing the hydrants in SFB and they have that let's just charge forward, take damage, and close. And it feels like the Talon can kind of do that. They're, they took the damage this could deal out, uh, used their missiles as kind of a, a defensive screen or whatever to eat up some of the phaser fire so they didn't take as much damage, which is similar to using fighters in, the, in a similar manner where if you ignore the Hydran fighters, you're screwed, so you have to try to hunt them down and you end up weakening yourself and then the Hydrans can plow it and just blow the crap out of you. No, but, and it feels kind of like the Talon feel the same way to me. <laughs> uh, a lot of similarities. Uh, granted, they don't have the fighters, but they have these drones which work kind of like fighters or missiles. They kind of work like the fighters and in terms of absorbing damage and not being able to be ignored. So I'm seeing, you know, the missiles are so potent against uh, the fighters um, because of the fighters' bad firing arcs, basically, that I have something that I don't have a real answer to right now. Now, maybe there isn't one. <laughs> and then also I have the advantage of the cloud, you know, the, the black hole protecting me and stuff like that, which comes with, hey, I'm the initiative player. I get to set up the train however I like in every fucking scenario of this campaign. So my quick shopping trip was in the way, but after that, uh, the Talon didn't do much. They just moved their missiles. Nothing exciting going on that they really wanted to do. Basically, they fired all their weapons. Uh, what can they do? And for the uh, Terrans, well, I'm doing a change because yeah good question I'm not sure why I thought I would get to turn but I can't turn there basically I'm not going to be able to take these missiles on the shield that I want to so I think I fucked up so let me think about that again so I did just come back to the game instead of that I pretty much gave up the ghost but here's the problem so I'm down a shield on this. There's no way I can really save the carrier, so I might as well fire my phasers now. No reason to shoot these missiles that are targeted on it. I threw some power into upping one of these, and I guess I'll just fire some range 3 phasers at minus 1. They can't possibly hit, so why bother? <laughs> Not much I can do here. I'm just going to get hosed. Because uh, this is range 3-2 and this is closer to the black hole. It can't possibly even do damage. Now oh, after the carrier has been destroyed, it blew up one of the fighters next to it. What we have is... Uh, I think all but one fighter is still around. Which is a fair amount of firepower spread out. It can be picked off and quickly reduced, however. If the Talon can get their armaments online and that's kind of the problem here is you know here we got a lot well we can't use the fusion cannons they're useless to us this disruptor well maybe we could clear this one off first I was looking at trying to fire in this direction but now I'm not sure if I went the right way in terms of marking uh, power off there uh, for the actual fighters they're gonna have a hard time cycling their weapons without the carrier to support them um, they can still do it it's just, they have no ex they never have extra energy. All they have is movement energy. They can never charge up their weapons more quickly than this, and that takes two turns for each. So I held off my fire of this. Now, had I done uh, these two firing here, well, I'd be at range two with phasers, which could do some damage to this side shield, but I honestly don't see myself likely to take down the Dreadnought. Uh, at all pos uh, at all quickly. If I hadn't changed facing, uh, I'd be further away, I think. No, I turned and moved, I'd be here. I'd be able to shoot at the battle cruiser, which I might be able to get some hits on. Uh, however, I don't know how good a couple of phasers is gonna be. It probably wouldn't take down the shield, and the battle cruiser can probably take care of what's ever on that side in that that amount of time. So I'm looking at kind of trying to slip around behind or maybe catch one of the destroyers uh, and blow that up. I don't, I'm not going to come out of this well as the Terrans. That's clear. I mean, the big ship's gone. The fighters left. They might be able to take down some shit, but it's not going to be much. And after the big suck of the black hole, we got everything um, pulling closer to it. There's 
and it's hard to see, but there's an, another ship under there. Uh, I really don't like the full hex coverage of these counters, and especially given the having to write on the counters, I'm still not... Yeah, I like the idea of writing on something that's erasable. I like the idea of not having to draw up my own SSDs, essentially, or ship charts or whatever you want to call them uh, and also not having you know e even if I photocopy their sheet which is something I'm kind of loath to do or use their sheet I still have to mark up the ship specifically for you know because these are generic instead of uh, what you have on a normal ship and they also yeah they get the weapon groups in here but yeah um it's somewhat less of an elegant solution in my book than individual sheets for all kinds of different ships that I can either photocopy or drop in plastic sleeves or whatever as in SFB. But on the other hand, you know, if I had to do that now, I probably would be pretty pissed about it as well. And now we're on the beginning of the third round uh, around. And yeah, it's looking pretty damn bad for the Terrans. You see the Terran fighters beginning to try to jockey into position to get their shots off, uh, at least do some damage of some value, and <laughs> see if they can hurt these uh, bigger Talon ships uh, moving into the next phase. One key thing about this is one of the big advantages in the game is being able to change that initiative at key points, etc. Now, that's particularly hard to do if you're the initiative player, but when you're the second player, you can often see exactly what's going to happen on the next impulse and know, hey, I want to grab an initiative here. So there might be a reason for the Talon to pull back to that second initiative just to be able to get that advantage because there's no way the Terrans can take that away from them. They don't have energy anymore. They can't do the AP uh, changing initiatives, but... We'll see. Aaron's managed to take out one of the uh, destroyers with their fighters. However, it blew up in front of one of their fighter squadrons, so they lost a fighter from that. <sighs> Killing ships seems valuable, <laughs> and losing a single fighter, you know. Uh, they took out a missile with it that would have taken out a fighter anyway, so it seemed like a pretty good trade off. Uh, I could have actually side slipped into here. I think I'll do that and avoided the kill. Uh, or I could have turned and moved into here. Even better. Why waste my side slip? And I'll get that fighter back. The Talon side is continuing to recharge their weapons. They've got one forward firing here armed. This they could basically arm whenever they liked and could get a shot off on the Cougar Squadron. The Cougar Squadron. Only two fighters left, finally got its shot in, took down the shielding on the battle cruiser. Uh, you know, the dreadnought is probably beyond my reach. But if I can take the battle cruiser and the two destroyers out, this isn't that horrible, I guess. I don't know. It's still pretty bad in terms of the points because I came into this as the Terrans with more points of ships and thought I could win. Here, the fighter's doing kind of dogfighter type stuff, uh, just kind of spinning around and trying to outmaneuver uh, to make sure that they aren't going to end up in this thing's missiles range. It's got two missiles coming online next turn. I'm not going to be able to get any shots off. Uh, I do have one more shot left, which I probably want to fire off before this round ends so that I get to recycle the energy on it. Uh, that one more shot... Yeah, this is a dead fighter. Uh, that one more shot, I'm hoping to get in on the rear shield rather than I could have gotten it on this uh, reinforced shield. And it's not going to do much there. It might do one hit on the shielding, but it probably won't at range two. So, yeah. Trying to move into a tailing position here. Yeah, I got to swing around and stuff, but um, just trying to get behind these guys. One of the problems is I go faster than them. So as long as they don't, you know, jump their speed up too much or whatever, or use their boosters to try to prevent it, I'm going to have trouble not pushing right through them. I'm going to have to weave around behind them to prevent myself from ending up uh, somewhere. This guy uh, took one more shot on the Cougar just before it moved and took out another one. 
fire disruptors at exceedingly close range. Two is the range you want them at. Unfortunately, I was at range one. I couldn't get a I couldn't get a shot on them at range two, and I want to cycle my weapons around more quickly. So I went with uh, I went with the shot that I I had there. I figure I can power that weapon up maybe again. And if he slips, since he slipped this way, now maybe I can get this shield on him and uh, fire from back there. Um, see, and I've got the weapons charged on this side too, so that's kind of cool. Uh, over here, yeah, I'm just trying to survive long enough that I can get another missile shot off. I've got two missiles on board this thing, so um, next turn, those are available. Question is, will I be able to get a shot off? Well, with two of my afterburners, yeah, I probably will be able to. Um, remember, the afterburners don't affect your turn radius, so you can like you not only get the extra move, but you don't necessarily, you can do it at a zero turn radius or something like that. Of course, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily help with the situation that I'm in. Um, kind of not lined up for a shot right away. And that pulls us over the time to pick new energy allocations and the like. It's kind of been difficult. The critical damage table doesn't describe where the damage is. It's not described in the rules. I found where it is. It's on the back of here, which is fine, I guess, once you're used to that, but it took a moment to find. Um, and I think before I had just been like, okay, that's strange that that doesn't have anything, but okay, they're mostly defined like random weapon group destroyed. That sounds pretty reasonable and I'm pro pretty sure I did it correctly. Uh, I see something in case of a tie reroll. You know, that's just... Uh, dicing off. Um, but in this case, helm damaged until repair, helm down until repaired. I thought I knew what it would mean, but you know, it would be nice if it was described somewhere. Well, it is. It's just not, uh, th there should be a, hey, turn this over and let's find out where, what these do. Because I looked here and I looked in the rule book and was like, I can't find it anywhere. What the hell? Um, the third place I thought of look. Well, actually, about the fifth place I found thought of looking, and I looked at each place twice <laughs> because the idea of it being on the back of a player aid, eh, just not counterintuitive or just not intuitive to me. Um, but now he's stuck going straight for a while, and that's kind of neat. Um, this was a matter of, hey, I'm going so fast, I'm not going to get another shot. Maybe I better take my uh, plink at him and. Whoa, who just did this and why are they not marked off? You know what? I think I cheated. Uh, I think I tried to fire the, oh no, that's not a dead fighter. Yeah, I fired the one remaining fighter. And I got this guy coming up. He's got a remaining fighter that he can swing in. Um, I figure that I can probably take this out with a couple of fighters. And that means that maybe I can take the battle cruiser out too concept of like, you know, counters with three ships on them and marking some of the ships off. It's not really clear and obvious what's going on in these cases. And I am finding it somewhat difficult to deal with the physical components and uh, maybe just a difference in, you know, how I'm viewing what's going on compared to how I view most traditional space games where you know, there's a counter on the board for each piece. You take the counter off, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now you gotta kinda try to process, hey, is this all marked off because it's destroyed or does it have weapons? What the hell's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I did the same mistake that I did with the missiles. I'll leave this alone again. Uh, I see two boxes and I count two. And I fired two weapons into there instead of just one. Um, I'll leave it alone. But yeah, that's gonna be a constant issue for me. When I see boxes, I think weapons, rather than trying to, rather than really picturing the number of weapons that are actually present. We cheated a little bit in favor of the Talon and accidentally we'll let this one stand as well. Uh, question then becomes, hey, do I wanna plink this thing? And I think the answer is yes, I do. The problem is, if I let this guy, um, turn on me, he's going to be able to fire his, uh, his missiles, and they're a real problem. And what I'd like to do is be able to kill him. How will I be able to kill him? Maybe by weaving in and out. So I'm going to try to get at that down shield and do some more damage to him. 
Burn Squadron here was coming up close. Uh, so the battle cruiser sailed in. Range three fired two disruptors. First one missed. They only hit on a three through six at range three. But they're still fairly potent against the fighters, and I was able to plink him off with the second one and get rid of his threat right now. The problem is my weapons take a while to charge too. Maybe not as long as the fighters do, but you know, there's still some danger in place there. And I've got my uh down shield slightly reinforced in the just in case something had, had gone terribly wrong there but i was able to get the shot off dreadnought trying to come around it's got a couple of disruptors charged here it'll have the other pair just ready too if it can get around and get a good frontal um it'll be able to take some stuff out but right now it's kind of slow turning <laughs> And if I'm using all my power on charging up my weapons, I'm not really getting uh, I'm not really getting the improvement with side slips and stuff like that that I would like. And he's heading into the nebula. He certainly doesn't want to go there, and he's going to have to side slip or else power that turn forward. The thing about this game, it is definitely quicker than like an SFB fleet battle, right? But the reason there are multiple reasons, but the main reason that it is is that the ships are just more fragile. Uh, the amount of damage is less, but the reality is a, a major strike from one ship to another can pretty much take out um, the, sh the opposing ship pretty quickly. In SFB, you can have a couple of ships plinking away at each other, you know, uh, unable to really do too much permanent damage. The first few shots will get you through the shielding eventually. <laughs> and then you got to maneuver around and try to get on that empty shield and hit it. Here you can really kind of uh, fire an alpha strike or whatever and just blast a ship down. They don't have a lot of hits to them. It's similar to how Rollmaster is faster than D&D. Rollmaster is actually more complex and there's more steps to an individual attack roll and hit than there is in D&D, but they tend to be more deadly. So, you know, people drop out of combat very quickly. And in the same way here, you knock things out pretty quickly. I wanted to say about that, what more than just the speed factor of that, it takes away some of the narrative that you get in an SFB game. You know, weaving in, trying to hit a shield, weakening it, weaving back in. Some of the bigger ships, you might, uh, you might have to do that a little bit more, but we can see even a, a fighter squadron can do a lot of damage to one of the lighter ships like the Destroyer and pretty much knock it out of the battle, um, which we saw earlier in, in one shot. On the other hand, the opposite's true. You know, <laughs> uh, the fighter squadron can be taken down by one shot from a, a ship uh, or one, one set of strikes from a ship. They're pretty fragile as well. The battle cruiser launched a bunch of missiles at Blackjack Squadron. It's basically doomed at this point. I don't have anything to wipe them out with. Uh, it's just a matter of can I avoid them for a little while? I don't think there's anything that the, uh, I don't think the nebula helps me there if I can even get in there. Uh, it does help with some things. Shields are down. Uh, nebula have no effect on missiles. But uh, they do create, I believe, a penalty. No, I'm thinking asteroids here. Nebula does not seem to affect. It says here, fighters love to hide in nebulae since they have no shields to lose. Uh, it interferes with shields and weapon targeting. I, I don't see anything there. Do I see anything? On any of the weapons charts, I don't see anything that, that says the nebula actually affects the weaponry. I can see where fighters like, I mean, fighters like it if it's a big cloud of them, but they don't like this. <laughs> and they don't really like the asteroids particularly either. They just don't dislike them is all that there is. It says it affects the weapons targeting. Um, I think line of sight doesn't go through them. Uh, so maybe you could ambush or something, but yeah. It actually doesn't even say it there that they block, but I think it does elsewhere. Even seeing uh, that for, you know, I looked here 
Blocking is specifically mentioned on planets um, and on black holes. It's not mentioned for asteroids or nebula. Asteroids and nebula. Oh, here we go. If you're firing through, subtract one for every asteroid that you would have to pass through, including any in the target ship's hex or firing ship's hex. Okay. So, yeah, there is there is a penalty in there. It's just not clear uh, where it is. But, yeah, there might be some advantage to going in there while I charge my weapons or something. Uh, not much advantage overall, though. And i got to be careful. This guy's got weapons. He could bring them to bear and knock out a couple, a couple more fighters pretty easily. Make lots of mistakes on the Talon turn here. One was I tried to turn in here and fire, but he's not charged up fully. He doesn't have, the, he didn't have the energy. Um, so I was using afterburners to go here, and I was also going to use afterburners to side slip here. And there should be a marker in front of that thing still. Um, to side slip there and fire on these, but these are dead. <laughs> Screw them, man. They're going to have to turn away and run. So I might as well keep my uh, weapons charged. Uh, that was my reasoning for firing the missiles rather than the disruptor. The disruptor... <sighs> These things just take a certain amount of time to recycle. Um, and there's just nothing can be done about them. I can just run away and see how long I can survive. And I can't disengage even though those things are tiny because they don't have a fast and a light retrieve. In the Talon phase I wiped out, uh, what is it, Wolverine there with those disruptors that was successful. A slight chance of failure, that's all. Uh, here, though, I charged in. I think I pulled a turn forward so I could do it. And uh, unleashed my one disruptor on that side. That didn't hit. It wasn't very likely, but I wanted to see if I could wipe it out before it gets another shot off. And then that's still powered up. I'm not sure. if The, the Terrans don't have any weapons available, do they? Nope. So... Uh, I don't know quite what they can do. I'm going to have to scroll again up there. <laughs> I may end up trying to piece that on top. That's going to be difficult to do with my table. And another problem, uh, something I screwed up. The explosion values for ships are different. And you might say, well, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. But something talked about, hey, fighters being destroyed by explosions, missiles being destroyed by explosions. Yeah, that's not the case necessarily. And I screwed that up where I lost a fighter and a missile. Neither of which would have been destroyed by a destroyer blowing up. No big deal. It was an equal trade-off if the missile had uh, still been on the board. <laughs> it would have hit another fighter. So I think it cancels out there. But I was just looking at, oh, geez, what happens... If I'm closing in on this and I blow it up, one of my fighters gets destroyed. That's terrible. Yeah, not really. Um, one of my fighters gets a hit, which is not at all bad because almost all weapons will do two hits instead, at least instead of one. The exception, of course, being phasers, but phasers aren't really something I have to deal with. So disruptors and missiles are all going to do two hits each and can take out a fighter um, if they hit. So... Taking one hit on a fighter is actually no big deal for the Terrans. <laughs> We're coming on to the beginning of Action 5, and I think I'm going to pull this destroyer off the board. He is in too much danger, and he's spooled up here, so he can leave. I'll leave the two big ships to try to cancel the fighters out. Uh, so this is just fine. Uh, these are the dead. I'll try to remember that difference. I guess I'll leave that out there for a little while, just in case he goes. He's going to need a little bit of it to turn, probably. Uh, we've got the Dreadnought sitting inside the Nebula now, which is not optimal. There are some weapons charged. He could take some real damage um, from that, but there'd be penalties at any shot going through the Nebula, so might not be the wisest idea. If he can line up a shot, we'll see. Oh, the uh, Talon decides to take away that opportunity from uh, the Terrans and burns his last afterburner on his dreadnought to slip out of the cloud and come around. Meanwhile, the Terran uh, fighters are slipping around trying to do some movement, hoping they can get some shots in this one. Turning around this way to come back around on the... Uh, Battle Cruiser. Push our way through a couple more of these turns uh, that I would 
tend to call impulses, really, from my SFB type feeling. Uh, we can see the dreadnought trying to swing around the black hole. It's nothing like a, a gravity pull or something that directly, you know, increases speed or anything, but you can get a little bit of speed off of it conceivably, but you got to run kind of close to it. Uh, it seems a little dangerous to my taste. Uh, the battle cruiser did fire off its disruptors straight forward, one hex away, missed that fighter. Killing that fighter would have been a big deal. Uh, and I didn't see where I was going to get another shot at it. This is a forward only facing uh, disruptor. Chances are that fighter is going to slip around behind me. Both the fighters are coming down on me. And uh, this one's actually uh, three different fighters. Mostly charged. Two of them are charged. And this guy's charged as well. So we've got enough shots to do some damage to that battle cruiser, even if we maybe can't destroy it. And at the end of the turn, powering up our front shield, because it could conceivably get hit. We're sitting in the nebula again, though, so that doesn't really help. But it doesn't look like the Terrans are going to be able to get a good shot on my front shield. Probably not any shot. I had had some thoughts that might happen, but he kind of moved in the wrong direction. Uh, and change power. This thing needs some movement to get involved in the fight. All the weapons are pretty much charged up except for those fusion guns which can't be used. I may have actually missed some charging opportunities on them. Just, you know, end of turn charging. And uh, let me make sure i got to charge that up still. This is keeping it slower speed or reasonable speed to keep a good turn radius. I've got missiles. If I can get those missiles locked onto something, I can take out, you know, conceivably I could take this whole thing out <laughs> with three missiles. Uh, maybe not, but it all depends on, uh, you know, what the firing opportunities are. But that does need to get marked. And you all jockeying for position along here. The fighter's trying to get some shots in on that battle cruiser. The battle cruiser just trying to get its front around on a fighter. Uh, it looks like it's likely to happen fairly soon because he gets two threes, he can power through a turn, but these things are fast and maneuverable. Regretting not taking a shot with the uh, dreadnought here. It could have made a shot coming out of the nebula at range uh, three. Now it's at range four and can only get half its disruptors into play. I'm hoping to get in there closer, but it's really not easy. This thing has such a slow turn radius when it's going at this speed. And I don't have the power to power through turns or anything, so <laughs> it's really hard to get that lined up. However, it's not easy for the fighters to line up either. Right now I could take a plink on this thing. If this thing turns, which it's fairly likely to, it wants to keep the shield out of the way, and it wants to... Uh, get its forward firing weapons into play, it may be making a turn pretty soon. That would open up this shield, so what if we fire right now with three phasers at range two? That doesn't seem like a bad choice to me. Uh, we're closer to the black hole. If we See, if we don't wait, we're not going to be able to line up. We can't side slip, and we're not going to be able to line up a better shot, really. This is no longer front arc, so in a sense I feel like range 2 is about as good as I can do anymore. So we'll just shoot all these. And we get one, two, three, four hits, which takes down the shield, but that's it. And to get rid of the flying tigers here, yeah, they're out of armaments, so they're not the important thing to kill. Uh, I fired a couple of disruptors at range 2 here, and got one hit. But then here at range three, I fired a couple more after having done my side slip, and I missed completely. And now there's still one more ship with a little bit of firepower left. I don't know what the hell I can do with it. Not much. I mean, I can plink at another shield on this thing. Basically, I have to stay out of its front arc because those missiles are just death. Uh, the disruptors at least can miss. And to the end of the round, uh, after being sucked in by the black hole, the fighters recharging their weapons. They're not going to get to shoot this round. We still got armaments here prepared. The missiles, all the forward firing on the battle crews are prepared. We got to stay out of those out of those arcs. 
Uh, and that's kind of tricky to do. <laughs> um, and at the same time, we want to set up so we can get a useful shot, unlike this little plink on the back door here that did basically nothing, you know. But if we wipe out all of its rear, all of its non-front shielding, it becomes vulnerable. Um, and I don't know, you know, these fighters, they're very maneuverable. Once, once there aren't a lot of enemy ships on the board, I can kind of stay out of their arcs. Uh, when I'm first coming in, though, they're vulnerable to those initial missile strikes. Uh, but right now against these heavier ships, man, I can, I can outrun them. And I'm glad to have those destroyers off the board because those are dangerous. They have, you know, they're fairly fast and maneuverable. These things, not so much. I slowed this guy back down and he's still not very maneuverable at 332. It's tough to get, get on those fighters. I think a pair of fighters, uh, I think the fighter squadrons alone against this, they take it down. The uh, problem is that battlecruiser, but if I can take that battlecruiser out and still have four fighters, I might be able to just stay, or even just one, even just a couple fighters, I might be able to stay out of this guy's arcs. Now, he does have these big disruptors, and they can plink me off, just like he has a couple big disruptors. i got to be careful of those, but outside of that, I don't know, maybe. Completely stay out of that arc. I fired off those missiles at these guys. <laughs> I powered through a turn with both of the um, both of the Talon ships. I thought I got a shot with this one. I don't. My arcs are wrong. I let it stand. Whatever, you know. I, it's really to me, it's harder to deal with this than SFB uh, in terms of catching these maneuvers because I have to make the decisions all um, pretty quickly. You know, I feel like, and then if I screw them up the hell with it, right? <laughs> I've screwed up so much. Plus the Talon are doing pretty well here. Uh, these missiles might be in danger. They have three, four, five, six. If these guys can keep the black hole near those missiles, they might get sucked into the black hole and that could be a wasted firing opportunity. Uh, when I first saw it, I was like, ah, oh, I got a shot, I gotta take it. And I mean, honestly, uh, probably won't get another shot you know so at least i'll be limiting what their maneuvers are they're going to have to try to run and hide with the black hole between them and that might mean that i can take cougar out you know all on its own or something i don't know pretty much exactly what happened the missiles are in a position where they're dead but the last ship of cougar squadron knocked out by two disruptors both of them hit actually but uh, that means two fighters left and things haven't really changed much since the beginning of this turn, except these fighters are going to be charged up and can take a shot. But taking a shot on the Dreadnought is pretty much useless, so we're going to want to try to get a hit on the Battlecruiser there. He's just circling around the drain. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's quite possible. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, do I want to change my power numbers here? That's the question. If I cycle up my weapon power by one, I get a shot on these guys with two disruptors. Range two at minus two. I think that's not bad, honestly. Uh, so if I go from three, three, two down to five, two, two. I don't have any afterburners, so I'm in a lot of trouble in terms of movement in that case, but I don't think the Dreadnought's gonna get shot down. And this guy, I think, think I want to keep it 3-3-1. Three, three, um, does he have any fire that he could do that's exciting? He has uh, two disruptors. Yeah, no, I want to hold them. So yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna up this. Now, technically, I shouldn't have done the sucking in until this. I, I should have pre-programmed before I sucked him in, but it's hard for me to visualize stuff. And uh, is this the definite situation? No, the other option would have been that the uh, fighters would be here, which clearly would be perhaps safer for them uh, if I powered it up. So I'm gonna leave it as it sits because uh, that's what I intended. Uh, that's what I initially intended. And they did have an option of uh, which place to get something to. 
based on that. So we'll start the next turn. But had I charged up those weapons, I would at least get a shot on him, but it would be at minus one. I'd only hit on a six, which doesn't sound very promising. Alan Ships did a couple of side slips here in phase B. have fire through here but boy does that look unpleasant I did shoot these that one I'm not sure I'm gonna get another shot with these so ba, 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 do I want to take it I took I took a shot and took out one of these with that now what is this neither is closer I can actually shoot through there without a problem the only thing that's hurting me is minus two here that's the same odds I had with these so I am going to fire the two disruptors there as well. And these are four through sixes because going through two hexes of this at range two. Neither one's closer to the black hole. Why the black hole shooting right by the black hole isn't a problem, I'm not sure. <laughs> the nebula may kind of account for that. And I get a hit and I take out the last of the fighters. And basically we've taken no damage. On, on these two ships. Uh, they've not taken any hull hits or anything important. This guy has a little bit of permanent damage on him. Uh, I could even leave him in the line, given his shape. He'll just have one hull hit on him. It doesn't affect his speed or anything, so he might actually stay there. And I've lost a destroyer. This is a massive victory. And the Talon win yet another one of the battles. Not sure I understand how, uh, how to defeat them yet. We'll see if other matchups work better. I had expected the carrier and the fighters to be pretty good. This next battle, though, I'm not sure because what is it? Mm, what do I have aligned for the uh, for the Terrans? It's I'm gonna find my sheets. Um, this next one's Orion. They have two carriers with eight fighters. That's scary. Battlecruiser, heavy cruiser, destroyer, frigate. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, four big ships versus eight fighters. Or not all big. A couple of big ships. I don't know if they want to fight this or not. Um, I give this up, and I have a base in the next battle. So... I'd be giving some points to the Terrans, but I'm getting a big point advantage there. So I'll have to think about that. Uh, I have some cleanup to do in between scenarios, and I get to load this one up.